He's a Roman Catholic who roams the world in search of exciting and entertaining missions that bring kids closer to the faith. And we'll find out where he's headed next tonight on EWTN Live, so please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packer and welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you guests from all over the world. Uh, before we meet our guests tonight, I want to mention that tonight is a feast day of St. Thomas More and St. John Fisher. St. Thomas was a lawyer and was a politician. He worked for the King of England. He was the Lord Chancellor of England, in fact, while St. John Fisher was a bishop. Both of them stood up for two principles. One, that the marriage of Henry VIII was an authentic marriage. And secondly, that the Pope is the head of the church and not the King of England. Both of them were beheaded by Henry VIII for opposing him. And I, one of the things about, if you get a chance to see uh, the movie uh, Man for All Seasons about St. Thomas More, you see what a marvelous man he was. Uh, there's not a movie about St. John Fisher that I know of, but one of the things I like about him is that he defended the queen, Catherine, against getting the divorce. And he used as a defense that even in before the uh, Christ's uh, new covenant, St. John the Baptist defended marriage and was beheaded for that. Anne Boleyn, the paramour of Henry VIII, was so upset because it meant that she was the Herodias, the, the, the false wife, that she had St. John Fisher so that, uh, beheaded, so that St. John Fisher suffered the same martyrdom for supporting marriage that St. John the Baptist did. And it's in our own days, when marriage and family are in such attacks, it's very important for us to keep in mind these great saints who laid down their lives for the sake of family and marriage. Now our guest tonight spends his time roaming here and there and everywhere with his sidekick, Pete the Penguin, to bring fun and adventure to kids through stories of the Catholic faith. So please welcome tonight's guest, the Roman Catholic, Rob Wall. Rob? Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Father Mitch. That's, that's Roman with a, an apostrophe on the end. Okay, you know. so this is not... Well, I am a Roman Catholic. Right, right, but, but you're Roman, Roman around, you're the Roman world, around right. so you, you're just like playing with puns, huh? Right, I do, I do. A I punny do. guy. I am kind of punny, yeah. Yeah, 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 so... You, you got the first dig in there, all, all right. right we'll, it. we'll see how it goes. <laughs> right, I think so. <laughs> and people, you know, people like Pete a lot, so I'll have to give him some Pete credit. the Penguin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, why do you keep him in a freezer? Well, um, if you think about it, penguins like the cold. A lot of penguins, though, live in, you know, more temperate environments. Yes. Um, but um, we don't dwell too long on that aspect of the show. <laughs> so thanks for calling me out on that. Um, you know, the whole conservation thing of energy with the door open, we, we understand that. But uh, what's more important is he's my little guardian angel. You know? okay. He's like my little conscience okay. on my shoulder. All right, good, yeah. good, good. And uh, he, you know, he's, he, he looks like a penguin. He's, he's a pretty good looking penguin. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Now, what is the premise? Because a, a, a lot of my viewers are adults and haven't sure. seen your show. What's the premise of your show? Well, the, it, uh, it began, the, the idea for it began a, a number of years ago. I would come down to Birmingham and I would, you know, shoot little spots, uh, little uh, faith factory spots, maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes where I was traveling the world. Now, of course, 
They may have the budget to send you all over the world, <laughs> but not no, me. No, they don't. Oh, okay, all right. I don't even go to the, the uh, right. World I, Youth Day. I tried to get you in there. I yeah, tried to get no, you in there. it doesn't work. They, my boss is to you know, see through all my tricks. Okay, so, uh, but they do have a wonderful uh, green screen, you know. And so uh, the through the technology. Tell people what a green screen is. A green is. screen is is a screen that's uh, green. Uh, so <laughs> it's like what weather guys use. You know, a weather guy is not really in front of a weather map. He's in front of a screen that's all green. So when he's standing there giving you the weather, here's a cold front moving in from Iowa. I don't know if cold fronts move in from Iowa, uh, but he's standing we there. You sure don't expect the heat. No, oh no. <laughs> so what happens is the green is then um, through the technology of the television keyed out. It is taken away and then it's replaced with every, whatever you want, like video of, of the Holy Land. Okay. Or video of um, another place that I might travel to. Right. Uh, so with that in mind, of course, I can't wear anything that's that color green because then that part of my clothing would disappear as well. Okay. So, uh, um, but we've worked that out. We've well, got you've that avoided out. green. I can yeah. see that in the And I do have um, a pretty loud Hawaiian shirt on. I thought, should I wear that or not? But this is what Rob Wall, the Roman Catholic, wears all right. when I travel the world. So um, basically, you know, EWTN has been to so many places and all of the different people who have been a part of this network have traveled. So there's a lot of uh, footage, a lot of pictures from all over the world. So right. you plot me in front of that footage and then I can tell kids about elements of our faith or aspects of, of being a Catholic. Sure, sure. You know, by take a little history lesson, a little travel to, you know, to Rome or to France or, or wherever. And tell, tell the audience what happened there or, or some story about it. Exactly. Um, and then what, uh, so that's where it started. Like Rob Wall, the Roman Catholic spot, a little spot, you know, a little uh, uh, like a commercial. Um, then we decided to expand that into to a show. So it became um, Rob Wall, the Roman Catholic, you know, a show where now the premise is I begin my day in my little studio, which I can see from right over there. Um, I begin my day and uh, Pete the Penguin is there and, and I've got the boss who comes in and tells Who's me. Who's the what, boss? Well, the boss, is a, he's a good looking guy. Um, he's got glasses on, played by me. Um, oh, So I the see. boss is like. So um, you're the boss. Yeah, I am. I'm the boss. Okay. So um, the boss comes on and tells me my next assignment. Okay. You know, and um, kind of guides me. I see the boss, uh, maybe, maybe other people don't, but I see the boss as like a papal figure. <laughs> uh, the boss makes sure I stay you on the right path. You have aspirations to this yourself? Well, maybe, maybe yeah, yeah, someday. Yeah. You have to get permission from your wife and kids. Right, I do. And who I'm, are here in the audience, I don't think I'm getting that permission from them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the Roman Catholic part of it is I, I, I start off in the, my home. I get my assignment. I go do it. I make my little Roman Catholic spot, and then the show wraps up. Okay. So, right, uh, good. so it's a lot of fun, and uh, I think... It helps break down our faith in a way that kids understand. And from what I've heard, adults understand pretty well, too. Oh, good. You know? Good, good. Um, yeah. I like to make it fun and silly, not, uh, not irreverent in any way, but uh, just, you know, if you, as an adult, if you have fun and you are able to, this, like, look at yourself a little less seriously. Sure, sure. I'm sure, sure you know yeah, all yeah, about yeah. that, right? Uh, yes, I It kind do. of breaks down barriers. It breaks down... Uh, it makes people feel at ease. Yes, exactly. That's exactly So that's right. what we're doing. And we're, uh, I've come down here with my family um, for our second season of Rob Wall, the Roman Catholic. And uh, we're shooting a number of shows here this week. And we stay here um, at EWTN. Yeah, and, we, and your family's very nice. It's been, been enjoyable to have them around. Yeah, it's been great. And, you know, it's, it's hard to come. It's a working vacation. I'm taking the, my wife and my kids away from, from summer to come here, to, to, to shoot this, to do this. So it's a sacrifice, but um, you know, I think there's always a good response from it. Well, I hope that they have found that the weather here is summery. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's been so wonderfully oh, hot, good. wonderfully hot. Oh, Let me just be hot. honest. That when you step out of a house and you're hit with this pillow of heat, yeah. You know, I, we, we're having a hard time getting used to it. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. run back inside where it's 52 degrees below right. zero. <laughs> so that hot, cold thing we're still getting used to. Yeah, sure. No, it's, it's a little warm down here in Alabama. It is. And in, I think you even said it's not even really hot yet. Not yet. It will be. Okay. Wait till August. Right, right. Now, 
what are some of the lessons that you want to communicate when you like you break down into right. humor and fun and having a good time right but what are some of the things that you try to communicate about the faith well let's take uh, for instance um, one of the new episodes we have coming up uh, we want to focus on like uh, like either um, a moral teaching or a sacrament or um, an element of the doctrine and at the same time maybe enlighten a child about a saint so one of the episodes we're doing is about how you don't have to be so focused on being popular or having the latest fashion just because everybody else is doing it they're finding their their worth in other things so that's a moral teaching you know that um, don't put other things before God and then we illustrate that by talking about a saint Saint what? Rose Saint Rose which one of Lima of Lima of right Lima. Um, and you know we we don't we don't say anything. We don't try to hide anything. You know, St. Rose of Lima rubbed stuff on her face so that she wasn't attractive. Um, we tell kids that. Of course, I don't want kids running to... If Rob Wall told me to rub pepper on my face, Mom. I don't, I don't want kids doing that, you know. Uh, but the point is, what St. Rose had to teach us about, you know, it, it's not about putting things, getting your worth from these other things. You get right. your dignity and your worth just by existing from God. You, sure. Just living, you know, uh, existing in God, uh, y you have dignity. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a very important lesson to teach. And using saints to help do that is great. Um, we have a clip that we'd like to show okay. of you teaching about the Immaculate Conception. So let's take a look at that All right, clip. Can I look? Bonjour, Rob the Roman Catholic here, traveling all around the world to learn about the Catholic faith for you. Today, I'm on an adventure to discover the apparitions of Mary, the Blessed Mother. An apparition of Mary is when she appears to someone special and gives them a message for the whole world to hear. And it doesn't matter that Mary has been in heaven for thousands of years, she still appears to people in our time. So where do I begin? In France, of course. Almost 200 years ago, Mary appeared here in Lourdes, France to a young girl named Bernadette. Now believe me, Bernadette was not expecting to see the Blessed Mother that day. After all, she was from a poor family and she was only 14 years old. And what did Mary tell her? She told her that the world needs to pray more and confess their sins more because the world is in need of some spiritual fixing. Mary also said that she was the Immaculate Conception. You ever hear that? The Immaculate Conception? It means that when Mary was created by God, she was created without sin for her whole life. And there's one more awesome thing she told Bernadette. Come with me. Bernadette was told about a healing spring of water that cures people of illness of the body and mind. Even today, thousands of people travel to this spring to get healing. All because Mary revealed it to a teenage girl who was ready to listen and help spread Mary's message. Was France the only place? So, so going to a place like Lourdes, you know, uh, bring, and bringing kids there, you know, they, uh, uh, most people don't get a chance to go there. You show them a little bit about the place right, right. and about the message. Right, exactly. And um, I, you know, they, they key that up behind me. That's what it's called when they get rid of the green and put the video behind me, technically. Um, so I can show them places that maybe they've heard about, but, you know, they, they may never go there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an important part of our faith. Uh, so... You know, I hope they learn a little bit about the Blessed Mother while also learning about apparitions mm -hmm. and also learning about treating, you know, honor your father and mother. You know, whatever we can fit in there. Um, and as you can see, i am become an expert of the transition, you know, from one <laughs> scene coming I up notice with, your head with keeps dipping. creative ways to go from one scene to another. I used to do that uh, dance quite a lot. So I see, um, I see. Um, and also, you probably were pretty impressed with my French accent. 
Oh, sure. Because you speak French, you said? I read it. Please. Read okay, it. You're ple you have to tell me how many languages you speak. Oh, just a few, but that's <laughs> not a big deal. All right. You don't like to talk about yourself, no. huh? Uh, so, you know, if I can, you know, bring something to children that they may have heard or maybe they've never heard, an aspect of, of the faith, then that's, that's important. Right, yeah. right. No, no, that's, that's extremely important. And do you enjoy doing it this way? Uh, I do. I like, um, I've been a performer for a long time. I, okay. I started off, um, you know, as a kid writing skits and stuff with my cousin and then moving to high school in a play here and there. And then in college, I was in part of the drama department, although that wasn't my degree. Okay. And then moving on into my adulthood, um, I, I started doing comedy, stand-up comedy, improv comedy. Is that um, right? Yeah. And you know what? The, it is so easy to, to get sucked into the worldly aspect of that. Yeah. Because if you go to a comedy club, it's not usually a Christian environment. As a matter of fact, that's why I don't go to comedy clubs. Yeah, I don't think I belong no. there. I think you need to headline at comedy clubs is what <laughs> I think. Uh, you could convert people left and right. Um, but it is, not, it is not a wholesome environment. Right. So it's really tough um, wanting to be the person I want to be, but also wanting to do the things I like to do. And see, one of the things, you know, humor is a great gift. And it, it shows some of the foibles, the, the, the weaknesses, the, the, the funny aspects of ourselves. But a lot of times they go for the gutter yeah, kind of humor because it's easy and it, it, it's cheap and easy and it's the same thing whereas you're taking what would be the approach that you take i know you take a, a higher well, level i do oh it's very high level in intellectually <laughs> sophisticated comedy um no for instance um I, and i performed at uh, catholic events and churches and, and as well as comedy clubs but i don't change the act at all um i talk a lot about um i, I have a big family you know i well when it comes to Catholicism, how many kids do you have? Five. It's probably not that big. Uh, you know, it's moderate. Yeah, it is moderate. Thank you. It's moderate. It, in the secular world, people look at you like you're crazy. Right. Five kids. Oh my gosh. But in the Catholic world, we're amateurs. Right. You know, because right, right. you know. there's a family up in Hansville that has 15. Yeah, whatever. They're I can't pros. Even, I have a I have a multiple of 15. I don't even have any who are close to that. But for me, it's big. It's a big family. Sure. Sure. Um, so the the challenges and the fun involved in a big family. That's just great. You know because I'm sure with any big family, by your first one, your first child, you just know everything. You have footage of them on camera and pictures and al al whole albums of your first child uh, and, and uh, you know, memories and uh, recordings. By your fifth and up, you maybe have a cell phone picture, uh, you know? <laughs> And you remember everything about your first child, every, the, when they, exactly the you moment you were born. You better start changing that because you're telling on yourself. I know I am. <laughs> you remember your first child, the, the second they were born, you know, and, and what was going on. By your fifth child, you have trouble with their name, you know? <laughs> she is so cute. What's her name? And you, I don't, you asked me too quick. Um, you kind of remember their name based on what you did when they were born, you know? Right. Well, let's see, when they were born, I think we had to change the tires on the car. Uh, so it's all just, it, it, things get harder. Um, and we have a, you know, right now we have five kids, two adults. That's a minivan. Right. If I have, if God wants me to have any more kids, I got to drop the mini and go right to van. Right. <laughs> I'm not prepared for that. I can't, right. I, you know, I'll look like a church group on a camping trip every time I go somewhere. That's right. There they That's go exactly camping right. again. Uh, in fact, we had to rent one of those big ones coming down here. 12 passenger van. You drove down? Well, yeah, we drove down, yeah. Wow. We saw Rock City. Well, did you pick up a few kids along the way? Or yeah, what? I think we did. I'm gonna have to do a count before we leave because we, I don't know, we adopted somebody before, before we left. Um, so yeah, we drive down okay. and uh, spend time in one of the houses here at EWTN. Right. But I do, I do really enjoy it. It's um, something I try to extend, not just to this show, but um, I speak to youth groups, uh, and um, middle school groups and adult groups as well. What do you find an effective way to communicate to you know, youth groups? Um, well, definitely a comedy. Um, if you are willing to go up there and sacrifice your own, not 
you know, adults tend to go up and be very adult-like. Right. And I'm about to teach you something, and here it comes. Uh, but if you're willing to go up there and just kind of poke a little fun at yourself, then it breaks down the barriers. Okay. You know, um, and believe me, I, I have a lot of stuff about myself to make fun of. Okay. Um, I had to put a lot of makeup on tonight. I realize that. Uh, so if you're able to just look at yourself and, you know, uh, break down the barriers. Sure, sure. Then they realize he's not taking himself so seriously. Maybe I should listen. Sure, sure. Uh, so I find that that's an effective way, using, using comedy. Okay. Um, now, uh, I don't know if you've ever been a part of improv comedy. No, no. Because you would be great at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously. You I did, and I taught high school, and that's as close as I got to improv, to improv comedy. Yeah, well, that is. I'm sure you heard a lot of funny stuff, too. Yes. Um, you know, do you know what the number one rule of improv is? What's well, that? Let me ask you first. you know what improv is? Yeah, improvisation yeah, uh, you, th th theater. And, and that yeah. you, somebody gives you a, a scene and that you, you have to it. go ahead and make up a whole story based yes. on the de little details. Just the one you. detail that you've been given, right? You have to, to create a reality and come to a conclusion. Okay. And you have to use the people around you. Uh, the people in the scene, and you all have to work together towards a conclusion. Uh, so what, what do you think the number one rule of, of improv comedy is? I have is? no idea. Uh, the number one rule is you've got to support the other player. Oh, okay. It's not go out and be funny. It's not get a good character. It's not have a hilarious scene. It's not be the best. Per it's support the other person. Uh -huh. So when you go out there, you're looking, what, you're listening, and you're watching so that whatever they come up with, you're ready to support them. And together you come to the conclusion. Right. So you can see how this is a great teaching tool for our faith. Because we are a community. We all, we don't just go to Mass because we have to. We go to Mass because we're called together as a, as a community to work together to get everybody else to heaven, you know? We have, to, we have to listen and support and, and love and acknowledge everybody else, and basically serve, you know. You know, as a matter of fact, it, it would make sense to me to use improv as a mo one model for understanding the liturgy, that you're not there to make yourself look good. Mm. You're there to respond to what's going on around you and that you are there to make the response of the community look good rather than just make yourself shine. Right, that's a great point. And improv is, can be used in uh, business, um, motivational business, you know, because as a boss, you need to be listening and supporting, not just laying down the laws and the rules. In, in marriage, improv can help be helpful for marriages and, you know, that community relationship. So um, I just love it. Do I, you and your wife do improv? <laughs> Um, no, we don't. No. She, is, she has lived with me for so long that it's not funny anymore. <laughs> I don't, people say to me when they look at my wife and kids, I bet he's just making you laugh all the time. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> that would get old very fast. Right. right. Um, but we do, um, we did go through a great uh, marriage, a Catholic marriage um, seminar, I guess you could call it, um, where it focuses on you know, treating each other, mutually respecting each other, and based on the sacrament of, of matrimony and the Eucharist. And so, you know, it's, I just think it's all about serving. Mm -hmm. If you're an improv actor, you are serving the scene. Right. You're serving the other actor. And if you look at it from that respect, other-centeredness, then the scene will be better. And into these kind of improv situations, you're able to introduce items of doctrine and morals yeah, exactly. and the faith. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, for instance, teens. Um, every, you know, I see teens walking around. Why am I? What am I? What am I doing here? Why? Why am I even here? What, why? Did, why am I on this planet? I don't matter. I don't have. Right. You know. Right, right. And you're in high school. Am I? What, you know. I'm not accepted here. I'm not accepted there. I'm, or on the contrary, there are some of them who think they are they God's know. gift to the planet. I am and then a, they think that right. they're the center of reality when they're not. And they don't, they're confused about, you know, what their purpose even is. They think they already have it or they have no idea what it's supposed to be. Right. So with improv, um, I cover, you know, you, 
you lo know, love, and serve. That's why you're here. You're here to know God, to love God, and to serve God so that you can be with him later. Uh, and that's what improv is. You have to know the scene, you have to serve the scene, and you have to love it for sure because you've got to come to an end, you know? So that's um, just the whole identity, Catholic identity. Sure. Is, uh, is a great way to, um, to talk about that. Um, and the Eucharist, you know, I, um, one of the improv things I do is um, I kind of poke fun a little bit at, uh, this isn't much improv as a scripted thing, but I get somebody to come up out of the stage and, and uh, read, read the play-by-play. -play. And I do maybe some of the not as, uh, not as uh, good um, communion postures. Um, because they're, we kind of forget what we're doing when we go to communion. Right. You got the guy who's always, hey, what's going on? Checking out his friends, high-fiving people going up to communion, you know. And you got the guy who's holding the baby and dropping the pacifier and the guy who's uh, asleep. So it's, if you can poke a little fun at people too, um, while also getting up across the idea, this is a reverent thing that you're doing. You're, you, Christ is now in you. So... Um, those are some of the things. Sure. Now, you do this improv at various Catholic gatherings, mm -hmm. and you, you know, go to, even to the improv uh, clubs, yep. comedy clubs, mm -hmm. and uh, you do this TV show. Is this your full-time work? No, it's not. Okay. I, it would be nice if it was, but it's not. Um, I know probably a lot this of This doesn't people. support your family. No, it doesn't. Um, I know a lot of people... You know, I, I see them. I see them on this network. I, I go to their shows. I go to their ser mission series. Um, some people do that, full-time ministry in this kind of thing. But I, I can't do that yet. It's, it's, it would be too difficult sure. to support my family. Sure. Um, I have a full-time job as a graphic designer. Uh, you know, Mac-based graphics and Good animations and all that stuff. I'm a Mac guy. Uh, so all the PC people right now are turning the station, I'm sure. <laughs> Mac person, I know how they are. Uh, so I, I have a day job as a graphic designer. And then I'm also a teacher. I teach part-time at the college level, teach design. And then I'm also an actor. I do commercials, radio, TV. And then I do the improv thing. Right. So, so this these opportunities to be able to teach the faith to various people, whether it be the young folks here at the mm -hmm. network, or whether it be teenagers and other groups in the parishes, that's just something that you do as your ministry as a layman who's trying to make a living exactly. doing your own job, but this is something that it comes along extra, and it's your way of contributing to spreading the gospel. It's, a, it's my way of evangelizing. Yeah. I tell you, I, there was... Um, a couple Sundays ago, um, you know, our, the Monsignor was saying Mass and his homily was about, um, uh, you know, some of us are called to, I think it was, you know, St. Paul's, one of his, his letters about some of us are uh, t talents given are smaller and some of us are smaller parts of the body and some are bigger. But in, in a, First Corinthians 12. Yeah, a, that, I was going to say that. Um, <laughs> a knee shouldn't say I'm not as important as a hand, right. you know. Uh, and I, the Monsignor was saying, some of us are called to serve at a lower level. Um, be a good person. Um, be with your kids and teach them the faith or be a good neighbor. And some of us are called at a higher level based on the talents you've been given. And, you know, you got to take a step back and say, is he talking about me? Um, honestly, when... You know, there are a lot of Catholics today who come back to the faith or they're re-energized. And uh, I think I was one of those re-energized Catholics. Okay. Um, I've always, I'm a cradle Catholic. I've never wanted to stray from my faith. But for many years, I just did it because that's what I had to do. Right. You know? And now you're finding that there's this energy to use your creativity to be able right. to, to spread the faith and teach not only your own family, but others as well. Right, exactly. I'm afraid that we've got to take a break. Uh, we want to come back in just a couple of minutes and get some of your questions and your comments for Rob and to talk about you know, maybe some of what you know how to do 
and how the Lord is using you and your gifts just as he's using Rob and his gifts. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome back. I just want to let you know that Rob Wall's The Roman Catholic Series is available on DVD through EWTN's religious catalog. You can call them at 1-800-854-6316. 1-800-854-6316. Or you can go to www.ewtnreligiouscatalog.com. Now, I'm sure some of you have grandchildren or nieces and nephews who don't get EWTN. And that would be a great gift for birthdays and other uh, and holidays like Christmas and so on. So you give them something to help teach them the faith. Uh, and that's a, I, I really recommend that as a way to get across some more about this uh, series. Also, uh, we've got a nice audience from different parts of the country, including uh, Rob's family from Ohio. And uh, we'd uh, love to have you come and join us. If you are able to make a pilgrimage here to EWTN, please contact our pilgrimage department by calling 205-271-2966. 205-271-2966. Or go to our website, EWTN.com. And they'll help you with places you can stay and scheduling of the masses programs, getting tickets to be on the program. The tickets are free. It's just that we have to make sure that there's enough room for everybody. And so we'd love to have you come and join. It makes the, the show a lot more fun if you're here. So please come and join us. And don't forget, next month in July, we're going to be having the EWTN family get together. And uh, you can uh, contact the network to be part of that as well. That'll be, you'll be on TV and it'll be great to have you here. Tickets for that are free as well. You ready for some questions? Yeah. I, did, I didn't know the tickets were free. I, I was trying to scalp them outside the studio. <laughs> How no, much did you make? I made nothing on it. I didn't. Good. <laughs> All right. You know, we're going to have to teach you about scalping. I know. I know. All right. We have a caller on the line. Hello, Teresa. Hi, Father. Hi, where are you from? Connecticut, Father. Great, and what's your question? Actually, I don't have a question. I have a comment and a thank you. I am one of the grown-ups that loves watching Rob the Roman Catholic. I'm also right. a catechist and confirmation teacher, and I wanted to let him know that I love being, being able to use what I see on his show in teaching my kids. Right. The most important show I personally found enjoyable and easy to teach the kids with is the airport scene regarding purgatory. Hmm. I thought that was so well done. I just really wanted to call and say thank you. That was fabulous. Hmm. Thank you for oh, that's great. giving me that well, kind of you. Yeah, oh. tool to teach my kids. Well, thank you, Teresa, for calling. I appreciate that. Thank what you. Did you. How did you equate I, airports with purgatory? Or I were you in no, Atlanta? Yeah, I was in, yes. <laughs> I was looking for the joke, and you had it right there. You said it. You beat me to the punch. Well, um, uh, purgatory, uh, what we talked about was, you know, I had this, uh, I was going off on another trip. You know, I was going off, I was being sent away to learn about, uh, I think, to learn about purgatory. Um, and I had to sit in the waiting area of the airport. Um, and I wanted to get on the plane. 
I want it to be on the plane because it was nice. It was a wonderful place to be. Um, and I couldn't figure out why I had to wait. This is ridiculous. Come on. Oh, I mean, I have my ticket and then somebody else would come up and sit down and they just would sit for just a moment and suddenly, boom, they were on the plane. Um, another person, one of my sons, just ran right through the lobby and he got right on the plane. So the point was, um, sometimes to get to where we really want to be, heaven, we have to go through a period of waiting. We have to go through a period of purification because we may not be, we may think we're ready, right? but we're not ready for that kind of glory. We're not ready for that kind of love yet. So we have to wait. So purgatory is not like a third choice. No, 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 no. It's if, if, if it's purgatory, you're going to heaven, but sometimes you have to be, you have to wait. It's a purification. Sure, sure. So that's what it was about. See, I, I think back more for that purification on my grandmother cleaning my, <laughs> the back of my ears. Oh. A, it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and B, I couldn't got, see why it needed to be done. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, go to a question from our studio audience. Where are you from, young lady? New Jersey. Good to have you here. And what is your question? When is your show aired on TV? Well, the show is, um, we have the first season was shot a, few, a couple years ago. Okay. And they've been running that first season. We've finally got our chance to make our second season. So I think um, until the new one comes along, they may run it here, they may run it there. So my answer is check out the website, EWTN.com, and there's a kids section. And it will tell you, maybe, they, you know, they used to run it on Mondays and Saturdays, but they may not still be the case. Okay, so check out the website. So it was on Mondays and Saturdays, yeah, it was but a, right. uh, in the afternoon. You know the way TV works. Right. New shows come along, they want to put it in the place of here. But if you check out the kids programming, it most likely would be there. Sure, sure. Oh, it will, it, How's you can definitely for, find it on the website. Right. And all of our programming can be found on the website. We have another caller coming in. Hello, Joni? Yes. yes. Hi, where are you from? Well, I'm from South Jersey, St. John Newman's Monastery. Great. And uh, I've been dancing around here for these people to stop so I get my turn. Let me tell you why I'm excited. Oh, I taught cool. Bible study over at St. John Newman's Monastery. Oh, I get just to the seventh and eighth grade children. Huh. I loved it. It ended because we lost the space and it just kind of drifted away. But I hunger for it. It was so wonderful to see these little children looking at me for answers that I had just found myself through Father Tegleski, who came here from Eritrea, and he's one of our monks. So what I'd like to know, my question is, does he have some kind of a, a, a draft, something simple that I could follow? and do my own, uh, my own program. I've been to Lourdes, I've been to at the Holy Land, so I have a lot of pictures, but I certainly wouldn't have anything as elaborate as he does. Right. And this way I can go anywhere I have the opportunity and teach children of all ages. I love them, they know it, they love me when they see me, and I'm getting excited already now. <laughs> I can tell. That's, wow. You sound excited sure. and exciting. Well, um, you know, my answer to that is I've been, um, I've been doing comedy for a long time. I'm in commercials. Um, I work at a TV station doing graphics, and yet I still cannot make the show myself. It's, it's difficult. If you want to make something or a program, not even a show, or a program that competes with everything else out there, you know, because kids are being hit with stuff all over the place. Yes, they are. Television. Um, internet. Society, internet, they're being hit with it all over the place. And if you want to make something or do something, it's got to be good or else they'll see right through it. Right, right. So um, I can't do it myself. I work with EWTN, production facilities, uh, production people, staff that make sure everything is okay. So when it comes to making a program, it's, it's tough, you know. Um, and if you you know, if you want to do something on your own and you have all kinds of resources, uh, maybe, maybe it's, it would be good to just check out the website and see what resources EWTN already has and cater them to your own, you know, your own presentation. Okay. That was a plug for the website, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah. That was a good one, too. <laughs> um, you know, uh, you, but you don't have any written materials 
that this lady right. could use. Not like a program, a template she could use. Right, right, right. right. That's difficult. You know, marketing yourself is really, it's, it's tough. It's a tough thing. It is, it is. But the, one of the best things would be to use uh, uh, at uh, the, the videos themselves. You could always get those yeah. videos and play those at the, 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 yeah. the Bible study. And I can even send her a shirt to wear. <laughs> I have like five of them over in the closet. She could there wear my go. shirt. She could put on a, a bald cap and just act like me. Okay, there you go. That'd be, that'd be something just to an idea. To. Yeah. By the way, we, we checked it out. And your program airs Mondays at 4.30 p.m. Okay. So Mondays at 4.30 and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Both Great. of those are Eastern Time. So 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time and Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern okay. Time. So we got... Our, our crew is great. I have another question from our studio audience. Sir, where are you from? Vesper C, North Carolina. Greetings from the nuns from Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, great. Yeah, the, a lot of people don't realize that some of the sisters from our convent here in Hansville have gone over to Carolina, and they, they have a new convent over there. So it's, I hope that you're enjoying them and taking good care of them, or else we'll come and get you. <laughs> I mean, no, that's good that you're here. Uh, what's your question? My question is, uh, like, what, like, uh, what kind of ideas do you, uh, like, what gives you ideas to make, like, an episode of your show? Yeah, how do you, uh, how do you come up with the ideas for the episode? That is a great episodes? question. Um, yeah, thank you. You know what I do? Honestly, I take a look at um, the Catholic faithful. I take a look at just the average person in my church, not kids. I take a look at the average churchgoer in my parish. And I try to figure out, what do they probably not understand? What are they getting wrong or misunderstanding or totally off, way off base on? You know, because they've never been catechized properly or they don't want to learn. So I take, you know what it comes down to is basic sacraments. Um, you could do years of programs for kids on just the seven sacraments. Sure, sure. And then something like uh, the real presence or a moral teaching. Oh my gosh, a purgatory. You know, how many uh, of the average Catholics even understand what it means? So I take um, an, average, uh, a, an average Catholic, not a child, because then if you're trying to explain it to an average Catholic, it's probably gonna be at a, a level that a child would understand too. Right, right. So, so thinking of some of the, the questions mm -hmm. that normal average Catholics have about our faith yes, yep. and the mysteries of the faith. Yep. These, this is where you get your inspiration. Yes, and maybe not even questions they would ask, but things that they don't understand. You know? Sure. Um, uh, the parish that I belong to uh, in, outside of Columbus in Grove City, Ohio, it's Our Lady of Perpetual Help. And we have a very active lay ministry, a lot of great programs and events for people to come to and learn about. So uh, being involved in that, is, um, is a great way to understand kind of the, the lay of the land. Right. What people are thinking and what they understand or misunderstand. Well, let me ask you this then. <clears throat> How do you find out what their questions are or what, the, what, what they don't understand? How do you get in contact with that? Um, you know, sometimes it's um, by breaking down, I don't want to say the negative, but what doesn't happen? If we offer a program on like the basics of the sacrament of matrimony, and we only get a few people, mm -hmm. <laughs> then there must be a huge deficiency in the understanding of that sacrament because the people that are there are the ones you see everywhere, you know? Right. The two or three percent that show up at everything. And if you do a teaching on, um, if you do a, 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 an adult session on, say, um, the Pope or the Magisterium, and only a few people show up, then maybe people aren't really understanding. It's not like if you get droves of them, um, because other people that are interested want to find out. But if they aren't showing up, I realize there must be a, a misunderstanding about it. Or maybe people don't like that. Or so they need to be, to understand it better. Sure. Understand it as a child. Sure. Be comfortable with it. So then when you're older and you're an adult and there's a session at your church on the Pope, you're going to go. You know, because okay, right. you're practicing your faith. Exactly, exactly. Let's get another question from our studio audience. Young lady, where are you from? North Carolina. Oh, you're also from North Carolina. Good to have you here. And what is your question? Why a penguin on the show? Why is there a penguin in your show? 
Yeah, what happened to the elephants? I think we have to go to a commercial break now, or? <laughs> no, no, no. Why didn't you choose a walrus? I know, because a wall, walrus. Um, I, um, some of the aspects of the show were uh, out of my decision-making realm. Um, I think they, somebody decided here at EWTN, let's have a penguin in the show. There, so, whoever's watching it right now is probably saying, no, he came up with the penguin idea. Um, I don't, I, somebody just had the, the idea, you know? I'm in my house, we needed a little conscience on my shoulder, a mascot, whatever, you know? And somebody came up, I think somebody here likes penguins. Oh, okay. Uh, so it just well, it could be up. all the nuns that we have around here. I wasn't, <laughs> I didn't say it, you said it. I didn't say it. Let's, as a matter of fact, we have a clip of Pete the Penguin. Let's take a look. This goes here, this goes here, here like this, and I think that's gonna be good. No. Robert, what in the world are you doing? I can't do that, I can't do that. These have to be like this. Audience seating, contestant seating, you know, whatever. She's up front with the cards, she shows us, and then, um, and, and I think that's gonna work a lot better. Um, unless, of course, Pete, you wanna, you want to sit down here? You can stay up there. You're already up there. You can stay there. Or you can come down here and sit. Whatever one you prefer. I like where I am. A penguin's got to stay c -c 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 cool. <laughs> Pete, I'm arranging the seats for the big game show. <laughs> Do you have any buzzers? You know, I'm talking about the kind of buzzer you'd see uh, that you hold or some kind of thing. Or some kind of buzz, or kind of boop, 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 boop. Or 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 when the, when the announcer says, hands on the buzzers, do you have anything like that? Chairs, buzzers, game shows. Is this some kind of trick you're playing on me? Pete, come here. <laughs> Pete, I would never play a trick on you. <laughs> hey, all right, all right, watch the scarf, Mr. Huggy Bear. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes so, kids like the penguin more than me, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, right. That's yeah, you'll a few years of therapy and you'll be over. I it. think so. I yeah, think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get another question from our studio audience, sir. Where are you from? Uh, Grove City, Ohio. Are you kin to this gentleman? <laughs> I'm his son. You're his son. Okay. So, what's your question? Um, what's your favorite hobby? That was that. He's planning that question because he wants to know what my favorite hobby is. Um, ever since I've been young, I've had like an old person's hobby. What's that? And I'm sorry for all the old people that do it, but uh, bird watching. Bird watching? Yeah. And well, maybe I, I that's mean, where the penguin comes from. <laughs> you did, that's it. I didn't even know. It was a part of the fiber of my body, my soul. They came, you're right. Um, no, I don't think that's it. But. No. <laughs> Because um, you I probably bet, don't see too many penguins in no, Ohio. No, I don't. Not to, unless I go to the Columbus Zoo. Right. Uh, but I've been a bird watcher for a long time, and it's always a source of, you know, that's one thing. If I can bring that up to teens when I'm talking to them, uh, immediately, of course, they start laughing. Because that's such a ridiculous thing to do for any person to go bird watching. Um, but for me, it's just a, it's a, it's a great outdoors kind of thing. And being in Alabama, I've seen a, seen a few species that I've never seen before. Uh, what, what are some of the most interesting species you've seen? Well, um, I've seen uh, some warblers here, um, and I saw some, uh, actually went to the Birmingham Zoo and saw some exotic birds. Uh, but, you know, woodpeckers, um, yeah, warblers, you know, you got mockingbirds everywhere around here. They're, yes. They're loud, they sing at night, uh, the, and I, I mean, you're... You're a hunter, right? Sometimes yes. you just want to boom. No, 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 no. I'm a bird watcher, not a bird shooter. There's a lady who wrote a book to kill a mockingbird. Oh. Which was forbidden. Is that a so, new one? Is that? Uh, no, it's an old book. Okay, right. So, okay. Uh, so we don't kill I would, mockingbirds. No, no, never kill no, mockingbirds. We, mockingbirds, are, we like mockingbirds. Yes. <laughs> But they're loud and they sing at night, so. Yeah, they're the loud, they sing at night, and we love the song. That's why Harper Lee wrote that book. Good point, okay. That's yeah. a sore spot, I understand. Okay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> She's from down in Monroe County, Alabama. Wow. Now, one of the things uh, that we then want to deal with, uh, in terms of some of the lessons that you intend 
to teach. What, what are you looking forward to teaching next and some of the places okay. you're going to be going next? Uh, well, I told you about the St. Rose, uh, for right. instance. Um, Is that going to be one of the new ones? Yeah, it'll be one of the new ones. Okay. And I'll travel to uh, South America and to Peru and, uh, you know, able to see, show kids pictures of some of the natural beauty. Oh, it's a beautiful place. Of South America. Um, I worked down in uh, Peru back in 75, and it was, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, so maybe they've never seen pictures of South American jungles, you know? Um, and talk about uh, St. Rose and, and who she was, and talk about South America, and, and talk about also um, putting other things before God, covering the first commandment, you know? Um, we also, one that's near and dear to me is comedy, so we're going to be talking about, um, you know, when is it okay to laugh? When is it not okay? When, is it, when does laughing turn into making fun of right. and teasing? That's something I always have to deal with, you know? If there's one thing, I, I mean, I'm not going to say anything I've said in confession, but if there's one thing I, I find I'm saying over and over again is uh, it's hard to, to not cross that line between having fun and then making fun. Right, right. So to tell kids that, you know, that's... Um, Having fun is, is great, and here's a, a saint that ha was a great example of it, St. Philip Neri. Um, he, was, he used fun in comedy. Uh, you know, he was a fun saint. He used to walk around with a joke book. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he always had a joke book with him so he could tell jokes. So we find out about him and find out that, uh, you know, maybe it isn't, um, saints aren't these people that you see on stained glass windows. Um, they were real people. They did real things. And there's probably a saint out there for a kid that they can relate to. Yeah. And it makes our faith more human, you know? You know, I, I think on that point of humor, one of the things that is, to me, a sign of authentic mental health is if a person is able to laugh yeah. at him or herself in a good-natured way, mm -hmm. not being mean to yourself and other people. But in a good-natured way, see the irony and the humor of who you are. I agree. That is one of the signs mm -hmm. of mental stability. And if a person is crazy, they cannot laugh at themselves. Wow. They can't. They, that, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and breakthroughs for mental stability are, are seen in the ability to laugh at yourself. Wow. Yeah, that, a, is, that is profound. Yeah, that's, that's an important thing. Mm. It's an important thing. So you're well, helping we, us along. Oh, with great, the, great. Not only with spiritual growth, but with mental st <laughs> stability. We have uh, one other one I wanted to mention is um, uh, we cover a, the topic of, of wanting to give up sometimes, you know. Um, we pray and we ask for God's help, but a lot of times we just want to give up. Right. Things are, get too hard, especially in today's society. It gets too hard, just, just give it up. Uh, so we talk about St. Francis de Sales and his, um, his role in, you know, converting this group of people. And he was given this very tough mission. Uh, you know, very, he was the head of the Diocese of Geneva, and he wasn't even allowed in his own city because it had become was, very right. anti-Catholic. So he was told to go and preach to them. So, of course, he wanted to give up over and over again, I'm sure, but he just kept at it and kept at it and eventually um, was successful in, in, in God's will. So that's something kids can hear about. It's a message of not giving up. They probably have heard that in school, but now it's um, presented in a Catholic aspect and from sure. a saint's perspective. Right. So uh, those are just a couple of the ones coming up. Right. And that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that, no, these are, uh, it sounds like you, you've got a variety of uh, good topics mm -hmm. coming up. Any others? Uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, one of the things that's going to happen is um, the boss is thinking about maybe thinking about leaving. You know, the boss is the guy that gives me my trips okay. where I go. You know, he might, he might just leave. He's getting tired of it. So does well, he want to give up? He better study the I know he better the sales. Thing. Right. <laughs> Uh, so he, he's got to figure out, uh, you know what, I, my character, has to figure out, now what am I supposed to do? I need the boss. I need his direction, his guidance. So then we move into exactly what does the Pope do? You know, the Pope isn't there to give you rules and to point the finger and say, you know, do this and do that. He's there to make sure that we don't stray. 
Right. He's there to guard the truth. He doesn't just make up truth. And, he, and to give us guidance as to where the church is heading and right. all that. And I mean, they, he doesn't make up new things, you right. know. Uh, he just makes sure that we stick to the things that we've already been given. Exactly. You know, he's, a, he's our shepherd. So we want to cover that. Okay. Um, cover that in, in one of those episodes. And there are, there are a few others. Good. Um, well, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh, so we can't go into others. People are going to have to watch the, the new series when it comes out this fall and uh, at 4.30 on Mondays and enjoy all the different places that the Roman Catholic takes you to. Rob, thank you very much Certainly. for being it's with you. Certainly, it's been fun. Thank with you. Us. And I want to give you a blessing. May Almighty God bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, you know, we can bring you Rob's program and all the other programs for children and the rest of our programs because this network is brought to you by you. Now, we've been down uh, a few hundred thousand dollars and we're starting to come back, but we need your support uh, to bring us back up. So keep us in between your gas bill, electric bill and cable bill, and we'll be able to pay all of our bills. Thank you.